In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the MIDI info and the MIDI port routing for the iConnect Audio 4 Plus in iConfig. The iConnect Audio 4 Plus has 29 MIDI ports which are distributed among the various hardware connections. There is one physical DIN MIDI in-out pair and there are two physical USB device jacks. Each physical USB device jack has associated with it 10 MIDI ports. There is one physical USB host port to which you can attach a USB hub. You can then address 8 physical devices via the 8 ports associated with the USB host port. Some USB peripherals may present more than one virtual port when connected. You can address a number of these, but we'll typically set this to one so that you can use the maximum number of peripherals on your USB hub. Now let's have a look at the physical jacks and their relationship to the MIDI ports. We have the DIN jack, and as you see it's bi-directional, as in fact are all of the jacks associated with the device. Then we have the USB device jack 1, which in this case I have a MacBook connected to, and as you'll see we have the 10 MIDI ports associated with that. Note that each MIDI port has associated with it 16 MIDI channels, giving you a large number of MIDI channels to work with. The names of the ports have been chosen to work the best way possible with the default iConfig out of the box with the hardware connected to the iConnect Audio 4 Plus. Now if we have a look at the second USB device jack to which I have an iPad connected, you'll see that we also have 10 MIDI ports associated with it. Let's now look at the USB host jack. You can have up to 8 devices connected via an external hub and in this case I have a CME X key connected to one of the hub ports and I also have an E drum set connected to another. You can reserve the names for the connected devices so that if you happen to connect them to a different physical port the next time they'll still be shown as connected to the appropriate host port in iConfig. One thing that's useful to do for the host ports is to change the name that's shown in iConfig. That way you can remember what you've got physically connected to which host port. And you can in fact do that for any of the MIDI ports. Now let's take a look at the MIDI port routing. You'll see first of all the names that I just changed and you could also change those settings under the USB device jack entries if you want a more memorable way of being able to address the connected devices on the USB host jack as well. Another item that's particularly useful to change is the name of the DIN port uh, to which you have connected your particular hardware. Again you'll see this reflected in the MIDI port routing once you've done that. Now let's take a look at USB device jack 1. You'll see that the sources are set to the same names as the destinations that they send to, so the DIN port is sending to the actual DIN jack. You can also see the USB device port 2 is going to USB jack 2 port 2. Likewise USB host port 1 is going to the USB host jack 1, port 1, and port 2 to port 2, and so on for all 8 devices attached to the USB host jack. Now by default the USB connection is sent to USB port 2, but you can always add ports if you want to send to, say, multiple iPad applications, each listening on a different port. Of course you can still send to 16 different MIDI channels per port and receive likewise. You can also, of course, make the same kind of changes to a device connected to device jack 2. Now I think I'm going to change the name for the DIN connection for USB device jack 1 so that it's easier to see what I'm working with. And these name changes may be reflected in doors that you have running on devices connected to USB device jacks 1 and 2. But whether your door sees it is a little dependent on the host operating system and the door itself. Now although as we've seen we can change which ports MIDI information is sent to, by default we've seen that it's going to port 2. The same is true for USB device jack 2. 
Why is that? Well, the default routing is set up that each individual device is sent to the appropriate places for the maximum out-of-the-box configurability without having to make too many changes in iConfig. Well, let's take a look, for example, at the DIN jack. The MIDI information from there is being sent to port 1 on both of the USB device jacks. It's also being sent to the USB host jack. If you don't want to do that, possibly you don't want to send information from your uh, MIDI connected devices on the DIN jack to keyboards or something on the host jack, you can turn that off. That's typically what I would do, but you can leave the default and it won't do any harm unless those devices are receiving for some reason and you need to turn it off. Now let's have a look at the host jack. You'll see that the first connected device, the X key on port 1, is going to the DIN connected device as well as to port 3 on both of device jacks 1 and 2. It's also going to the USB host jack to the other ports on the USB host jack and you can turn that off again typically if you don't want to send to those other ports. And that will still leave it sending to both the USB device jacks and to the connected DIN device. If we look at the drum set that's connected on host port 2, you'll see that that's going to device port 4 on the USB device jacks and again also to the DIN jack and to the other USB host ports. Typically for something like a drum set, I'll turn off uh, the connection going to the DIN jack as well. I don't particularly want to play my micro -corg as a drum machine and so uh, I'll leave it just going to USB device jacks 1 and 2. Well that's it for our introduction tutorial to the MIDI info and MIDI port routing for the iConnect Audio 4 Plus in iConfig. Be sure to watch the other tutorials in this series for more information on using iConfig with your iConnect Audio 4 Plus. Thank you.